Um, I was once doing an open broadcast at um, McDonald Jones Stadium on the concourse, and it was the middle of winter, and it was tearing through this breeze that was just freezing the life out of us. Lucky there was a man I could just cuddle who was next to me who may have just saved me. I'm talking about the man who has featured from time to time on the program. It is the return of Tui's News in the Newcastle Herald, an eight-page wraparound in today's paper as well as online for the Newcastle Herald. Joining us now from said column is the great man Barry Tui. Welcome back to the run home with Joel and Fletch. Hey, boys. How are you? You remember that day? That was cold. It wasn't that cold, mate. You you were a bit soft, I thought, that day, actually. <laughs> oh, sorry. My apologies. I was there for six hours. You were there for 10 minutes. That's fine. Um, <laughs> how are we feeling, Barry? Footy's back on. Night's a good season last year. you got the home game. It must be pumping up there, is it? Yeah, it is, mate. Um, pumping is exactly the right word. It's a lot of hype, a lot of expectation around the team, obviously, after what happened at the back end of last year. and. And uh, it's actually gone berserk up here, Joel. I think mm. um, I had a, look, had a look today. There's 27,459 members. Wow. Um, which, to give you a, an indication of what that means, last year, probably at this time, there might have been 16,000. Yep. So mm. um, that's the difference that, um, you know, a 10-game winning streak and, and a couple of games into the semis uh, makes to a town up here that hasn't had much to crow about for the last decade. I've been trying so to sell to uh, pretty excited. Been trying to sell to our colleague Brian Fletcher here. Mm. I have got the Knights in the top four, right on the right there, right there. Are you with me, Barry? <laughs> well, I hope you're right, and mm. and you're one of the few down there that um, have got the Knights. A lot, a lot of guys down there haven't got the Knights in the eight. No, no, let alone the top floor. I don't know where Fletcher's got guilty. Them, but, um, you got me. I, I haven't got him in the eight. Yeah, why? Because I swapped them out with the I swapped the Knights and the Raiders out with Manly and the Cowboys. Let me riddle you this. Fit, I couldn't fit them all. In. I know, Brian, but the second half of I last know, year, best defense, best defense yes, out yes, of the yes, lot. Yes, 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 and the other thing is, if you want a better form guide, last year they played Penrith twice, got within a field goal and about eight points. They pushed the Broncos within four. The two grand finalists, mate, they are a legit team. They are a legit team. Sure, got over saying you can't put a square peg in a round hole. Yeah, well, I'm putting, I'm squeezing this in somehow. Uh, what, what, what is, what is um, a pass mark? Do you think? What, what, what do you think the fans will be happy with, Baz? Are they happy with, well, with the top eight, or they, they want more? Well, they, well, they finished fifth last year and and made it to the second round. I, I think you know a forty to ten loss in the second uh, semi final over in. In New Zealand was was pretty hard to take and and look if you, which I pointed out in the column a bit today if you, if you look back at the ten game winning streak I think there was um, three wins against teams that made the top eight in that ten and they they played the Raiders um, in that first semi the Raiders were pretty depleted and got away with it in, in Golden Point and then obviously got that hiding in in Auckland so. Um, you know, the back end of the season was fantastic, but um, there's still some stuff to prove, I, I think, this year. Um, but as I say, the expectation up here is is massive. I just hope the boys can live up to it. I, I think that they can, if they play to their potential and keep their stars on the field, I think they can challenge for the top four. I'm with you, Joel. But, mm. um, you know, it's so tight. And I'm, you know, I'm with you, Fletch, too. It's, you got, it's, it's about leaving teams out of the eight mm. when you go to try and pick your eight. It's pretty tough. Now, Baz, were you a little bit uh, perplexed? I, I was a little bit perplexed of the signing of Jack Cogger halfway. Was he signed before the Knights went on that run or after? Because he's now coming off the bench. I don't think you can carry him on, on the bench. Well, I don't think you need him personally. I, I think once Braley comes back, he might fill that position anyway. But were you surprised that they went out and, and bought Jack Cogger? No, no, I wasn't really surprised. I yeah. think they they thought that they, given the the way things have gone up here, halfback wise, after Mitchell Pearce left, um, you know, they haven't had a halfback to scratch themselves until they got uh, Hastings. Um, and I think that they they looked they were looking for a black backup. They had Clune last year who did a pretty good job, I thought, when he came in. But I just think they wanted to probably upgrade that a little bit and maybe put a bit of pressure on a few uh, players. Hastings himself. Yeah. Uh, Tyson Gamble as well. Cogger there puts a little bit of pressure on, and I think the the, the thing in the Knights' favour this year is they have got some depth in some positions or more depth in positions than they have 
over the last three or four years under Adam O'Brien. So that's a positive. Mate, I think I think Cog is um, a great signing. I, yeah. if he no, forced, I think he's a great he forces, signing. He, I think he's a great yeah, if he signing. forces his way in the yeah. team, I think um, that means that um, he's playing really well and that forces the others to, to lift their games as well. Okay. You know why, um, and by the way, you mentioned Hastings. Hastings didn't play in that shellacking in that final against no, the Warriors. I think he's a lock anyway. Yeah, for I half think back. Hastings he's a lock for half back, you reckon? No, I think he's a lock forward. <laughs> hey, um, forward. we've been talking, Baz, about, um, mm. about uh, the Knights and the fact that you know, Crossland's jumped out of the ground. Who, who he's he's your starting dummy half now. Madge Maguire wanted him in the New Zealand side, and we know that Jaden Braley's a class act. He he must be on five or six hundred up there at the Knights. We're just finding it really hard to to look at this end of the season, and both are in that seventeen. Do do you expect one? And when I say one, it's most likely going to be Jaden Braley. But are, are you convinced Jaden Braley finishes the year at the Knights? Yeah, well, provided he's healthy, he yeah. will. Yes, um, I'm, I'm convinced that as soon as he's healthy, he'll be he'll be back in, whether it's on the bench initially or whether he's starting. But yeah. I, I think he'll 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 probably I think the coach will probably run with both, um, one on the bench and and one starting, which will mean that probably Jack Cogger will miss out if the other two halves are playing all right. Because I, I reckon a lot of clubs a... would love either of those, Cogger or Brayley. Well, the only problem is he's on about seven hundred thousand mm. Brayley, mm. so that's going to be hard to. It depends what how much the if someone wants him, yep. how much they're going to kick in. That's that's always a problem. Hey, uh, Baz, can I ask you about this uh, KPP, Piers Paul? So yep. we spoke to Cro- uh, Phoenix Crossland, and he said he's like an SBW. So we've got SBW KPP. Is he that good, or has he got the potential to be that good? Oh, well, you're talking about one of the the greats of of rugby mm. league. In Sunny Bill, so look, I, I, I don't think you want to put too much pressure on him. He's he's massive. Is he? I'll give you that much, Fletch. He's. Yeah. Um, I stood on the sideline a few weeks back at training, and uh, he walked past a couple of meters away, and he's he's a huge boy. He's what he's 100, nearly 110 kilos and two meters tall. So he's pretty imposing. Um, He's got some great skills. I think the the Sunny Bill Williams sort of uh, the the likeness there came from someone in England who suggested that he can offload, which he can. He can offload like Sunny Bill used to, um, and, he, and he'll be playing on the left um, when he gets a, an opportunity, which is KP's or Kalen Ponga's favourite spot. So we'll we'll have KP giving it to KPP KP, on yeah. the left hand side. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, is he look, is he a back row? Is he a back row? I know he's a back row, but could he play in the middle? No, nah, he's a back row. Yeah, he's, right. he's big, rangy, and and uh, getting one on one with someone, then um, they'll have trouble with him. Um, so he's he's a back row. He's played a bit of centre over in England, I think, in the Super League. But I think um, they see him as a back row. But he's had that foot surgery. Fletch that he came over with, so I think he's maybe three, three or four weeks of full training before the season starts. So um, give him a bit of time to um, show what he can do. I think defensively he's got a few issues that he's got to sort out. So that's something that um, you know they'll take their time with. What's the and what? What an amazing turnaround too from Adam O'Brien this time last year or, or maybe a month into the season. He was under the Donald Trump. He really yeah. was, and and now the, the town love him, don't they? Baz? Well, they do, mate. They love yeah. the t- everyone loves a winner. Yep. And um, and I think he proved that the playing group was right behind him. Yep. That ten great game streak basically started when he was under the most pressure that um, you know the coach has been under up here. They, they were talked that if they lost that Bulldogs game, then whatever round that was, um, that he was going to get the sack. Well, they won that by sixty and then won ten in a row. So, and what it's done, obviously, is. Um, you know, not only has he not got the sack, but they've given him an extra three years on top of this year. So, um, yeah, look, he's he's obviously proven himself to the playing group. Uh, there's no risk in the world. They were playing for him at the back end of last year. And, and um, as I say, the public loves a winner. So, yeah, everyone's on side. How big a, how big a loss is uh, Dom Young? Mm. Oh, he's a huge loss. Yeah, yeah just um, his physical presence for a start. Um, his try-scoring ability. Um, yeah, and and you know his ability to bring the ball back out of out of the night's end, um, he, and and just the way he could score tries that you know probably a lot of other wingers couldn't score. So um, he's a massive loss. They've also lost what uh, Lockie Fitzgibbon, Kurt Mann, who played a lot of games last year as well. They're they're not there. Um, so there's some big losses there. And Ari Tuala, 
he hasn't got the physical presence of obviously of Dom Young, but um, he was the club's leading try scorer two or three years back. Um, and he's pretty dependable, very reliable. So we'll see how he goes. But um, yeah, they certainly lose some in attack with with Dom Young not there. That's for sure. Now, Baz, um, I don't want to I don't mm. want to put the mock on, but the last time uh, the Knights' best player dyed his hair, <laughs> he was a Brookvale <laughs> Oval, and he had the worst game <laughs> I've ever seen him play. The great Andrew Johns, he decided to dye his hair red. Uh, your fullback, who's yes. the best how player. Emba- how, embarrass- how embarrassing was that, mm-hmm. by the way? I-, I was at Brookvale on the hill that day, actually. Yes. Um, wasn't working. I was on the hill watching, and Joey runs out with, with red hair. It was <laughs> very, very embarrassing, and he played accordingly. To yes. He so was, he are was you, terrible. Look, are you a little bit worried about well, your fullback it's, it's, now dyeing his hair blonde? It's, it's like the coloured boots a little bit, I reckon, mm. Fletch. I mean, yeah. it's you're back in Langland's day, it was a no-no and it was shocking. But these days, players are, you know, their hair's all over the place. They're, there's a few different shades of different colours floating around. And, and uh, Kalen's sporting the, the blonde look. Um, he's not the only one. Jackson Hastings went the blonde look too. Yeah. Um, Abby, in the pre-season. Abby so, Coruscant. Um, I, I, yeah, well, it, it's it's probably a case of um, you know we, we you don't criticise until they don't perform, I guess. Well, Wayne Bennett and wouldn't if have they it. Don't perform, no. well, then you could. Yeah, well, Wayne Bennett. Yeah. If you had a if you had if you had a mohawk, you're gone. Yep. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, if you had a mullet, you have, you're Wayne's, gone. Wayne's a fair age, though, isn't he? Yeah, Wayne's, I know. He's Wayne's, <laughs> Wayne's but old school. He's also got he's a fair record, in, Baz. He's, he's also got a fair record. I know he has. Can but I, I ask, Baz? His, his um, record is because of his, you know, indifference to hairstyles and colours. That's what I'm saying. It's putting, putting the <laughs> right. Hey, Barry, can I ask, um, Caelan Ponga, right now, mm. as far as a star attraction in Newcastle, how does that compare to when Andrew Johns was rocking at his highest in Newcastle? Uh, he's up there. Um, Joey did it for longer. Um, but I think um, last year, well, last season, I think KP really came into his own because he was the he was the real instigator, I guess, to a certain extent of that ten game winning streak. So, um, but Joey did it for how many seasons in a row? Joel, he, yeah, he, no, um, I'm, just, I'm less referring to his ability on the field, more more about just the both of them are just rock stars, rock stars, yeah. Yeah, well, Joey was a decent rock star, wasn't he, off yep. the field as well? KP is certainly a bit quieter than Joey is off the field. I, I can give you that. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> but um, as, as far as um, the fans go, I, look, I, I think there's every chance that, um, yeah, he's he's the one. There's, there's no risk in the world. He's, he's the main man. But, I mean, he's the one you could throw him in with maybe five or six others across the NRL as being yep. the, the major rock star of the comp at the moment. So, uh, and if he keeps playing like he like he did at the back end of last year, well, who knows? Who I, knows where he'll be in, in the, down the stretch as far as the Knights go. Baz, by the way I'm talking to you, you sound upbeat and a lot of energy. I gather you didn't go to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. I enjoyed it on TV, Fletch, and yeah. I'm happy that you got home in one piece and there's been no stories come out, I don't think. Well, well heard anyway. yeah, you've got to wait till the Tuesday after the game. That's why I always, that was always my uh, go. If I got through the weekend and I didn't have Chippy Fralingos ringing me on a Monday or Tuesday, I was in the clear. Um, do you, would you like to see the Knights go over there? And if, if so, would you be going over there, Baz? <laughs> well, I can tell you that the the Knights CEO Philip Gardner has has basically public come out and and, and said that um, this is before he went over there by the way last weekend. So I don't know whether he's changed his tune after being there, but he he did say that um, the Knights wouldn't give up a home game to to play over in Las Vegas. Um, oh. So whether whether that will go against Newcastle initially in the next year or next two years or how you know if they're going to spread it around I don't know but um, he's not prepared to give up a home game to go over there so unless the NRL is prepared to say okay well Newcastle will take you over there and it'll be an away game then um, I don't think it's going to happen. Hey Baz, final question before we let you go. Uh, two questions. Yep. I, need, I need a score line for you tonight. What you truly believe, not not swayed the way of the the, the Knights. What you truly believe the score will be, oh, I think they're going to win comfortably myself. But the second question is, um, is there going to be a sellout? And the third question that I needed to ask you is, are we expecting 1-17? You're the most connected man in the Hunter. Will they be as per the program? 
I haven't checked on the one to seventeen to be honest, Joel. Yeah. Um, there's been no, there was no indication that, um, that that there's going to be a change. Although I noticed on social media that someone's suggesting that um, there might be a doubt about Tyson Frizzell. Oh. But whether that's true, I, as I say, I haven't checked it, so I don't know that that's right. And there's so much stuff on social media that's wrong, so I wouldn't wouldn't uh, take it with a grain of salt at this stage. As far as the um, the crowd goes, um, it won't be a sellout. Um, but it'll be up there. It'll be 25 plus, I reckon, Joel. Um, which on a Thursday night is is um, you know pretty remarkable. But I reckon it, it'll be 25 plus. They're, yeah, they were sort of not given too much away about the crowd in the last couple of days. But that's what I reckon it'll be. Could be a little bit higher than that. Hopefully, hopefully it is. Score line. Look, I'm a bit conservative, Joel. I know you mm. think the Knights going to win easy, but uh, I thought the Knights would probably win that semi easy last year against an understrength camera, and they didn't. So I'm, I'm, I think the Knights will win, but I think it'll, there might only be six or eight in it. Excellent, Brian. Good stuff. That's great stuff. Comprehensive, convivial. Uh, he's, he's ve- we're very convivial. Uh, yeah. Baz, do you know what convivial means? No idea. Yeah, I didn't uh, know either. Oh, well, I'm, presu- I'm presuming it means. Um, I oh, know. I'm not even going to guess. <laughs> no, I had no idea. It means friendly. It doesn't Mate, mean convenient. I know that journo. much. I'm an old, I'm yeah. an old school journo who didn't go all that well at English in school, to be honest. Yeah. So, well, English, uh, English was my bestest subject at school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Boom. Yeah, Try and, the schnitzel. And, see you every Thursday. And math, math was mine, uh, <laughs> Barry. There's, there's three different types of people in the world: those good at math and those who aren't. Uh, thank you very much, Barry. <laughs> Great to have you on the run home with Joel and Fletch. Thanks, boys. Enjoyed it. There he uh, is for the Newcastle Herald, the great man, Barry Tui. Uh, yes, bro. We got a quick break. The Moose. Now, the Moose, Newcastle played seven of the bottom eight teams in their last 10 games. Easy draw, overrated, 11th in 2024. Moose. Okay, I, I see it differently, but uh, you never know. SEN League, you can hear the call back tonight with the Knights take on the Raiders. Coverage starts at 7 p.m. Daylight savings time and the Warriors versus Sharks tomorrow from 5 p.m. straight after the run home. It is a run home with Joel and Fletch. Uh, plenty more on the other side of this.